Hello everyone, I'm Never Dot. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about designing pins, enamel pins in Photoshop, and also showing you the new pins that I've designed and have received now. Let's go see. So these are my three new pins. They're Series 3. I'm calling it the Never Folks Social Series, uh, mostly because they're eating food. And we've got Anita Amanita, the little poisonous mushroom pin and she's quite cute I've been wanting to do the mushroom pins for quite a while and especially this one because it has a few extra colors in it and this is her and she's enjoying her bubble tea I hope you like bubble tea if you haven't tried before please try choking on it now they're not really choking hazards I don't think it's like a pill and the next one is Jenny the bok choy she's eating some faux noodles or pho, uh noodles <laughs> and yeah, the noodles I designed in Illustrator to smooth out the lines to get them nice and straight and I am very happy with how they came out. One little challenge that I had with uh, this pin is that she's holding two chopsticks and I was envisioning the chopsticks having a separation between them in the pin uh, so you get more of a feel of the chopsticks. I sent them to the factory and then I had to separate them out. I raised one of the chopsticks up so that there would be space. I didn't appreciate quite how small the pins were. I knew how small they were but I didn't appreciate how small the chopsticks would be and I didn't realize the gap was microscopic and I brought the pins back down uh, the chopsticks back together because they're okay the way they were. I was gonna fill in the chopsticks actually with a color but I instead to opt in to just fill them and use metal as the color so she's got metal chopsticks and that's a fine option uh, you don't always have to use color you can use the metal as a color Lastly, we've got Agent Kite, uh, the next in the dinosaur pin series. So I'm always trying to release a dinosaur with each pin set, and this is this series' dinosaur pin. Uh, so it's Agent Kite uh, with her drone that falls around everywhere. All the dinosaurs have to have some sort of technological thing with them. And the pterodactyl, it was quite a challenge because I did not know what to put with a flying being because uh, they can't really carry anything while they're in flight. So Agent Kite had to be holding something in her claws, whatever, feet, talons. And I initially had an old style satellite and then I tried putting a planet. Planet didn't make any sense at all. And really the drone is something that has always been associated with Agent Kite. So I decided to put it in. Now I got a question on a previous video. Can you show us how to do pins in Photoshop? So I did some experimenting myself. I don't use Photoshop to design my pins. I use Krita and Krita is a free software that anyone can go grab. Uh, it's really good. Uh, it's a good art drawing tool for painting, realistic painting, sort of like Corel Painter. Um, and I used Corel Painter before. I've switched to Krita now and it's very good. But if you want to do it in Photoshop, you certainly can. Now I did go into Photoshop. I tried doing some of the approaches that I did in Illustrator, but in Photoshop. So I took one of my pins, um, let's say Agent Kite, I popped it into Photoshop and then took out the color layer and just left the outline layer, which I kept separate. When you're drawing these things, obviously don't color them on the same layer. Um, with just the black layer uh, visible, I tried doing a select of just the color. Uh, so to get the outline, black outline selected, and then you can go into the paths panel and change it into a working path, uh, which will then convert your selection into a vector. Um, I did that. And in Photoshop, when I zoomed in and gave it a look and see how good it was compared to Illustrator, I found it was fairly subpar. It, it wasn't very good. It was quite jagged. It lost a lot of the resolution and the detail, and it just really corrupted the shape of it a lot. I would have to fix it tremendously uh, to make it look good for something I would be proud to submit to a factory. I would say that that process of selecting and converting to paths is not very viable uh, in Photoshop. I wouldn't do that. Uh, it would also take, if you wanted to use it that way, you'd have to clean up the vectors afterwards using the best age pen tools. It's just a mess. Um, and I don't recommend it. So after going through that process of converting it in Photoshop and just seeing the jagged result and the amount of work I would need to clean it up, it's not really worth it. And I say that more because it's not worth it because the factory doesn't need that. Um, while it's good to provide them with a vector file uh, because you are going to get fairly perfectly close to what you're asking for, um, you can send them your art directly, your raster artwork. It doesn't have to be a vector. It just has to be fairly high resolution. Um, you can send it to them. They have the Illustrator. They don't have a problem doing that conversion process for you to trace it. Um, some of them might charge you for that. So often they don't. Uh, it's not really that much. It's not time consuming. Um, they'll send you back a proof of what it looks like. If what you get back is 
pretty close to what you think, then you're good to go. If you think it needs to be tweaked, you can tell them to clean up a line or something, but I don't think it's usually necessary. Illustrator is actually pretty good if your file is large enough. If you give them a low resolution file, obviously there's gonna be issues. Uh, and they might have to do graphic work, which they might charge you for. Uh, but you certainly can, in Photoshop, draw crisp lines, make sure you're using a pen that doesn't have soft edges or textured edges. Um, so use one of the sharper brushes um, and keep your layers separate so your your black outlines separate from your colors. But yeah, you can just do it in Photoshop. Don't worry about converting it to a vector at all. And just send them that. So Photoshop is totally perfectly fine to use. Just use a high resolution, use a sharp edged pen, and you're good to go. So those are my new pins. I'm gonna be selling them for the first time, well, on my website. You can get them all right now at shop.neverdot.com. Available right now. You can go see their zoomed in, close up pictures. And they're really cute, I really like them. All the other pins are available too. I've got like nine of them now, so. Eh. <laughs> all available on my shop online. And I'm also gonna be selling them at Ottawa Comic Con in May, May 10th, 11th, and 12th, which is Mother's Day, I think. Always busy for Mother's Day because of Comic-Con. Um, but I look forward to seeing people at Comic-Con. I love it talking to people that are new to NeverDot and also returning people that want to know more about NeverDot. And I just look forward to that event. And I'm very happy to get these pins out uh, for you guys. And I hope you enjoy them. Uh, hit me up on any of my social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, if you can find me there. Uh, anywhere, YouTube, here. Uh, love chatting with you guys. Please comment in the comments below as to what pins you'd like to see me do in future. What characters are your favorite from the comics or maybe new creatures that I haven't touched on? So until next time, see ya. Just FYI, these pins are not to scale. There's no way Anita is as big as Jenny. I mean, That'd be crazy. A mushroom and a bok choy, same size. What kind of nightmare world do we live in? Bye. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got something useful out of it. Uh, Photoshop is definitely a viable method of designing your pins. They can use raster work. Uh, they just separate it into layers. So I hope you guys keep creative and keep designing. See you next time. Bye.